I will elaborate a little bit more on uh, on slicing up the volumes in cylindrical shells. So here's the idea. So here we have the unit sphere, which is given by the equation x squared plus y squared plus e squared equals 1. But it can also be achieved as a, uh, as a, as a revolution body by rotating a function fx equals the square root of 1 minus x squared around the x-axis. Yeah, so if we rotate this graph about the x-axis, we get a unit sphere. And what we see here is that we chopped up the uh, graph of the function, like we did before. So we have uh, the estimates, uh, the left point F estimates of the graph, which uh, gives us the rectangles over here. So we have, uh, we cut up the interval minus one, one in equal pieces. So here we have two, four, six pieces. So we chose the left endpoint approximation. So we have intervals xi minus one xi and we sample points xi star, which equals xi minus one. Then uh, this gives, gives rise to a rectangle of uh, width uh, delta x and uh, height f x i star and if we rotate those rectangles about the x-axis then we get a picture like on the right we get a number well six cylindrical shells and the nice thing is that these are not arbitrary uh, cylindrical shells because we know the height of such a, a cylindrical shell and we know the radius of such a cylindrical shell so the radius is given by f x i star and the height is given by delta x yeah so we know uh, by choosing a, a sample point x i star we know the radius f x i star so this makes it possible to calculate the volume of such cylindrical shell. Well, the cylindrical shell has a volume, one such a cylindrical shell, I should be precise, uh, is given by h time times the surface area, a x i star, but uh, h is now given by delta x, and we know that a x i star is no more than pi times the radius of each such shell and this is given by pi times f x i star squared yeah so and if we now add up all those cylindrical shells when we get a first approximation of the volume of uh, uh, enclosed by the unit sphere 